Hello everyone, this is Sam Sicaria. Um, I want to give you a little uh, update on my day today. Actually, um, I went out to the movies today uh, here in Phoenix. I went to Deer Valley AMC 30 to see an Assyrian movie. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you have heard of this movie or not. It's called Parhanita, which means butterfly in English. Um, it's a it's a movie that's uh, made in Baghdad by a great writer and director named Frank Gilbert, who lives there. And basically, um, I want to thank him for uh, doing a great job. Not only him, but the cast and the crew, and everyone that helped make this movie possible. Um, as you know, as Assyrians, we really don't have much abilities to to bring to our public or to our people as far as movies or dramas or or any sort of uh, anything that has to do with uh, with kind of emotion or a story or or um, or a play uh, it's very few and far beyond anything that that we've ever seen so uh, I thought I'd give you a little report on uh, what happened. I actually this movie has been out for a while, um, and it's making its round to uh, uh, not only the United States but uh, around the world. And um, you know the response has been good, uh, not as great as I thought it would be. But then again, like I said, we are Assyrians, and Assyrians. Uh, for me, uh, the movie, uh, tell you a little bit about it, uh, it actually takes place in Baghdad, Iraq, and um, it's, uh, it's a story that's kind of a, uh, well, the, the, the main story has three parts to it, which are three different stories that kind of intertwine together and make one big story. So... Um, as far as the, the writing and the editing and the sound and the the whole look of the movie, I kind of paid attention to because uh, I had made a movie before and I loved that technical part of it. Um, um, and I think it was 1995, um, me and uh, a great buddy of mine named Al Genza, who lives in Chicago right now. Um, how you doing, Al, if you're going to watch this, um, who directed the movie. Um, it was an American movie, but uh, nevertheless, it was actually, uh, you know, the concept of getting people together, writing a story, uh, having the equipment, having the time, having the locations, having the funds uh, to put this project together. And, um, you know, it didn't go where we wanted it to go due to some technical difficulties. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, this movie, that's what I was looking for as far as the sound, the editing, and the look of it. Uh, to me, that was more important than them just making a movie. So... Um, the movie part of it was uh, actually, you know, the story was good. Uh, I wouldn't say it was great, but it was good. I mean, for people that are living in a country where uh, it's not only hard to wake up in the morning and to go to work or to school or to find something to eat or find a job uh, or just staying alive from getting shot at or blown up at church or at work or in your car, uh, is is just uh, you know and then and let, let alone to make a movie so I really commend them on doing a great job as far as uh, you know uh, writing a story and filming it and getting the actors together getting the crew together and finishing it so for that um, I have nothing but praise and I hope they do it again with a lot of help of uh, some aid society there and some people that are sponsored here uh, through funds and stuff, they make the movie uh, a really success. Uh, it, like I said, it is actually out on tour and it's going to be all over the United States. And I think they're going to go worldwide too with that. And hopefully they'll, you know, they're going to see a lot of success. So, um, 
The only disappointing thing is with me is uh, I went to the 430 show and just like any other things, Assyrians, you know, um, we talk a lot about a big game and what I mean by that is we do a lot of planning and we do a lot of saying and we climb the mountain before we even take one step. So in other words is we do talk a lot, but we don't do a lot. Do a lot meaning in support of each other. Uh, it seems to me that if, if one of my Assyrian friends is a successful businessman, instead of me going to him and asking him, you know, John, Steve, whatever his name is, you know, what are you doing that you're so successful in your business or in your life that I can do, you know? Uh, but we tend to hold that back and just kind of bring this negative vibe against them. You know, it's, he's, he's either getting his money this way or he's not doing this, but you know he's not doing that. Or he's, you know, probably doing this to get that. You know, it's always something that we have to knock that person down instead of actually finding out what kind of steps that he's taken and basically following those steps so you could become successful. So to me, that's always been a burden. It's been a burden in my life uh, as an artist, photographer. Um, and you guys have seen some of my uh, crazy antics on Facebook or, or YouTube, but I'm a nonstop guy. I try everything, okay? I'll make videos about, just like I'm making one now. Okay, I don't just like posting photos and, and people's little quotes, okay? Uh, you need to get creative and you need to get people motivated in what your interests are and not, uh, you know, there's a saying that if you spend all your time thinking about someone else's dream, you are taken away from your dream. So when you're posting like little quotes and little this, little, you know, those are all great for a day or two, but after a while it gets annoying because it's not really you, okay? One day you're hating men, one day you're hating this, one day you're hating birds, one day you're hating that, and you know, all these quotes have no meanings, okay? Do something creative, you know? If you can build something, build it, put it on video and let's see it. You know, if you can sing, sing, let's hear your voice. You know, uh, if you can take a photograph, take a photograph. Let's take a look at it. You know, we all have something. We just need to bring it out. Okay? So, to me, the Assyrian people have always knocked anybody that's better than them. So, instead of following the footsteps of how these people actually get to where they're at, we actually knock them down. And that's pretty sad. And I might say that we do, you know, a lot of times... Uh, say that, you know, we've modernized the whole world, everything has come from the old Assyrians, the old Babylon. Well, that's great. You know, those guys were actually men who fought with swords and spears, and they had to actually survive every day. So, you know, uh, to me, the, the, the youth of today, I mean, take their cell phones away from them. They have, they have no clue what to do. Okay, they don't even know how to type probably. So, um, you know, we're, we're so um, basically programmed right now to depend on so many little things and gadgets that, uh, you know, uh, just parking the car today actually at the theater and walk into the theater, I, I almost ran into five people because they weren't even looking up. I swear to God, I'm not lying to you. They were just like this. Hey, let me show you. This is what they were doing, okay? They, were, they weren't even looking, okay? I had to say, excuse me, you know, and it was like I was the one bothering them because now I stopped them from probably checking their Facebook or email or whatever the hell they're doing, okay? So our whole um, society now is actually grown up like this, okay? So we're not only going to have neck problems, but... We can't even look at each other anymore. We can't even talk to each other, okay? There's a lot of things that I do, actually, put on Facebook or YouTube to have people just comment on a photo, you know? Nice, uh, you know, nice color, nice, uh, you know, that's, how did you get that shot? How long did you wait? What kind of lens did you use? What kind of camera are you using? 
none of that. You know, they, imagine if that like button was in there. I, I got to admit, I got, I use it too. But there's certain things that, yeah, the like button is great. But I normally like to leave a comment. At least it's a courtesy. Okay. Uh, so I don't even get that. You know what I mean? Uh, I just get like, and once in a while, the the people that they know who they are actually leave a comment. So, to me, it's the youth today is what we need to get. Now, a lot of people that were at the movie today, and I have to say, it's pretty sad. Uh, these people actually not only went out and made a movie to actually for us to enjoy, and not only to enjoy as Assyrians, but actually to have something. You know, there's a lot of people that we talk about, you know, such as the Spanish people, the Turkish people, the, you know, the Russian people, that, you know, any, anybody that's, uh, that's kind of a, a third world people have their own TV shows, their own programs, their own networks, their own TVs, um, you know, and we're trying to bring some of that to our culture. You know, it's sad that it's 2013. And I know we've made movies before, but, uh, you know, now we're getting them to play them in the theaters and people are going there and it, it feels right. And to me, it just seems like the crowd that we're seeing today is really the older generation and they're doing it due to respect. The younger generation, I have no idea where they're at. They're probably at Applebee's right now ordering a two for 20. Okay. But to me... It's the youth that we need to get, okay? Now, I know they have a lot of time for American Idol and, and Vampire Diaries or whatever show you're watching right now and, and basically being programmed to sit on your butt and not do anything. Um, and most of you I know, you go to college and you're basically, you know, have exams in school and I commend you for that, okay? But it doesn't take too much time if you're going to go see an American movie, not to go to see an Assyrian movie, which we don't have too many of. If we had like a thousand of them, I could say, yeah, you know, you're right. There's like, you know, go watch it tomorrow. Okay, these people actually made a movie in a country where there's war. Okay, there's killing, shootings, bombing every single day. They made a movie for us to enjoy. Okay, now... To show this movie in the theater, you have to rent out the theater. The theater is anywhere. I've actually gauged these things and, and, and asked about them. They're normally about fifteen to $1,800 to show a movie. Okay. Now, if, if the person showing the movie can't even get that money back to even pay for the theater rental, that's pretty sad, I have to say, about the Assyrian people. Okay, so we need to stop talking and start doing. Okay, let's stop talking about what we've done 6,000 years ago. Okay, it's what you've done today. Okay, so uh, to me, talking doesn't really get you anywhere, you know. And if you want to change, you got to change your mind to change everything that you do. Okay, by just saying it is not going to work. Okay, so these people rent out a theater and we can't even get over a hundred people to come see a movie. That is pretty sad to me. Okay, now I was married for 23 years before I got divorced. And for that 23 years, actually, I had left the Assyrian population. I had friends, but I left them all. And I started doing things my way and started succeeding in photography and in art, selling my art. This is all my art, as you see in the back. Most of these are sold. Okay, they're just waiting to be shipped. Now, as far as photography, I do the same thing. So... It's, it's just sad to me that you go to a movie um, and you can't even get 200 people. You know, let's, let's not say 800. Let's not say 500. Let's not say 300. Can we get like 200 people to spend an hour with each other seeing a movie that's made by the same person who is 
the same nationality, the same uh, blood, and support him. So when he gets these feedback, he can go, yeah, you know, I have people that love what I'm doing and I want to do more and show them what I can bring. If this wasn't good enough, I'm going to get better. And hopefully I'll inspire somebody just like I would. I would want to inspire somebody, but there's no people on there. Even like on Facebook, nobody asks me what kind of camera to use, what kind of lens, you know, what kind of aperture you're using, what kind of flash, what kind of setup you have. I've done things from water and oil that looks like space. I've done drinks that are spilled. Nobody's asked me anything. Now, you might not be interested in photography. Well, that's great. You know, that's fine. But but the idea is is nobody wants to put an effort to ask a question that would actually 